We are delighted to have, to have from Wake County, North Carolina, Major Dave, standing back here in the back. He is a, an active constitutionalist propagandist, yes. a, a zealot or hobbit, as John McCain might call it, right? Um, he is a retired U.S. Army officer. Uh, he spent lots of time in Guilford County because uh, he used to be an assistant professor of military science at North Carolina A&T. Um, he is a fellow at the Institute of Political Leadership, which is based out of Greensboro. And he is the founder of the I'm MAD, which stands for Making a Difference in North Carolina Projects. Um, Major Day, he'll tell you all about cucumbers. Thank you. Not much of one for giving speeches, um, but in many ways I got my start doing a lot of things right here in Gilbert County. Um, just to give you a little bit of background, I've not been involved in politics very long at all. August of 2010. I was attending the annual Purple Heart Dinner in Wake Forest, North Carolina, and ran into a gentleman by the name of Bill Randall. And I, as a sideline, done music for weddings and class reunions and stuff, so I walked up and gave him my business card. And actually, it was more of a business decision than anything else. If I could help you with your campaign, give me a call. Love to do some sound and share work at your events. One thing led to another. Three weeks later, lo and behold, I'm the events coordinator for his campaign. <laughs> Before it was over with, I was the debate coach of the legislative research for doing all the dirt digging on Brad Miller, trying to find out how we could unseat him in the 13th district. Thank goodness the process took care of that as of today, and I guess you all know the news. But the best thing about being involved with Bill's campaign was it allowed me to become associated with people just like you. And there's a lady sitting here in this room that probably more than any other had a direct influence on my making the commitment to get further involved, and that's Ann Clifford. <laughs> she was working on the campaign, and through her, I learned just what grassroots politics was all about, and what people could actually accomplish at the local level. And so I came tonight, not with a speech, I got just a few buzzwords up here to remind me of some things I wanted to touch on. Because of that experience with the Randall campaign, I went to my county, uh, GOP in Franklin County and found out that there was a whole bunch of seats on that executive committee. And there was an at-large position, so I threw my name in the ring and got elected. So I said, well, if I'm going to go in, I'm getting all in. So I went to the convention in June, the GOP State Convention in London. Got to meet a whole lot of other great people like-minded, just like Leo. Found that there were some differences between us, but the one thing I found out is, you know what? You're not that different, you and I. We have a lot in common. And I can trace that common thread all the way back to the very founding of this country and those founding documents. <coughs> so after that, coming home from, from June and hearing all the complaints about the establishment and the GOP, and the establishment wasn't listening to the voters, and the voters had no way to talk to the establishment, What's wrong with this? Why can't we have a conversation? And the wife and I sat around and talked about it, and that's why we came up with the concept for the MAD program. I started talk, looking on Facebook, and honestly, I wouldn't be here for looking at Facebook, because that's where the connectivity is between all these groups right now, primarily. So the idea was, why not just get the leaders of all these groups together? And I found out that it had been tried several times before, and it failed. In talking to people about why they all failed, one word, egos. Everybody wanted to be the tip of the spear. And from my military background, I spent five years up at Pentagon. And when you look at the broader strategic planning, when you've got the Air Force, the Marines, the Navy, the Army, there are a lot of different ways to fight a battle. And if you go up and ask each one, any one of them, they'll tell you they're the best one to fight that battle. So how does the chairman of the Joint Chiefs really draw that balance? He looks at where the strengths are in each of those components and how they can best be applied to achieving their goals. So when I've traveled the state, I talk to these groups about strategy, ways, means, and ends. 
Those are the th that's the three-legged stool. If you lose any one, the stool tips over. The ends. That's what you're trying to do. The ways are the tactics. How you can apply that, and the means, of course, are your resources, your people, your time, your money. And how do you balance all of those three to come up with a strategy to take you to the goal you're trying to achieve? I have to tell you tonight that this group, C4GC, is the flagship group among similar groups in North Carolina. That's right. And I'll be honest with you, I'm not saying that to blow smoke. Let me prove it to you. How many of you sitting in this room have worked with people of similar groups in other counties or districts in advancing the purpose of what we're all doing? About half of it. About half of it. Exactly. And when I travel the state, if anybody has a question, I'll say, contact Jody, contact Pam, contact Pam, Jeff, any of these guys. Because I know first you're willing to help and that you know the right answer to the question. And if you don't, you know who to go to to get the answer. So what you're doing in this room is paying dividends far beyond the ballot box. It's not just getting out the vote. You probably have one of the best get out the vote programs going right now, and that's a great thing. Um, not to slight anybody, but the more T citizens has the billboard campaign. They have billboards going up all over the state that they decided to put together. It doesn't get out many votes. It may, it may reach some. But the point is, we've got to have somebody doing everything. Every piece of the puzzle needs to be worked. You can't do it all from the upper county, but you are doing your part. But understand, there is a broader group and a broader mindset building. There's a coalition forming as you form those individual relationships with people in other groups across the state. And it's, that is the voice. It's scaring the heck out of the politicians. They've never had the answer to us before. They can simply basically do what they wanted. And since the 2010 election, they've stopped. And now they're listening. So we need to speak even louder. And we need to be absolutely right in what we say. There are political realities. We can criticize a politician for voting against the bill that we wanted them to vote for. You know, the four most dangerous words in any piece of legislation are, and for other purposes. <laughs> How do you think Ron Paul got all that pork delivered back to his district in Texas? He would put the amendment in the bill, knowing it was going to pass without his vote, and then turn around and vote against it. So he could say, I never voted for that money. Well, of course not, he didn't have to. Does that mean he didn't support it, that he didn't want that money to go to his district? So we have to be careful even in that, in our analysis and our criticism. We have to understand the political process. So that's why I applied to be a fellow at the Institute of Political Leadership. I figure if I'm going to play this game, I need to know all the rules in the rule book. IOPL is a nonprofit, multi-partisan program that was started back in the late 70s through a combination effort of the Center for Creative Leadership out here on North Battleground Avenue and the Political Science Department at UNCG. It was designed to train people, regardless of party affiliation and political persuasion, in how the political process works. Not how it should work, but how it does work. Because that's the playing field that we have to play on until we gain the leverage to change that. And it was very, it's 10 weekends over a six month period. You go into a TV station and actually make a 30-second campaign commercial as if you were running for office. You do a three-minute interview with a newscaster asking you about issues. It helps you understand your own convictions, why you believe the way you do, and then to communicate that message effectively to other people. That skill is not important just to candidates for office. It's essential to us out here right now whether we want to be a campaign manager someday or even run for office, but just in selling our story and promoting our message to the broader public, you'll pay $250 for your meals and your refreshments over the course of that 10 weekends. And that's not much. It's $25 a week. It's not bad. Classes run from 4 in the afternoon to about 9 o'clock on Friday night, and then from 8 to around 2 or 3 on Saturday. So you're back home by Saturday night. But over the course of those six months, 
you will get education, experience, and exposure. You'll learn the facts about what happens in politics. You'll be getting the experience of actually going into a radio station and doing an on-air interview or making a commercial on TV. And the exposure is not only to people currently involved in the political process, like the John Hoods, the Chris Simmons, uh, uh, Rufus Edmondson was one of the presenters that I played, <coughs> people who were actually involved in politics in North Carolina, but also exposure to the other point of view, because the classes are somewhat balanced between Republicans, Democrats, and unaffiliated. So you actually, as part of the practical exercise, have that experience. And whether you ever run for public office or not, it will give you a much greater appreciation of how. And we need to recruit. We keep saying we need new candidates. We need a candidate that's not going to waffle. Well, folks, where are these candidates going to come from? They're going to come from people just like you and me sitting in this room. People who have never contemplated running for public office before. So how do we prepare them? And that's one vehicle. So I ask you to start looking around. Look at that next generation of political leadership that we need in North Carolina. We can't wait until filing deadline to find them. We've got to find them now. We've got to start looking at the 2015 election cycle, the 2016 election cycle. And if we do our homework now, we've got a much better chance of winning.